Welcome to She Been Ready, the podcast. She Been Ready is a conversation, a declaration, and a clarification that Black women have always led. On this podcast, I, Dr. Wendy Williams, educator, psychologist, leader, and auntie, will be joined by Black women who lead and those who have been led well by them. So, you don't have to get ready when you stay ready, and you can trust in the leadership of a Black woman because she's been ready. All right, so welcome back to She Been Ready, the podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Wendy Williams, and I'm very, very, very excited to have our next guest, Ife, not Ife, Ife Obi. <laughs> Is that correct? Obi? Yes, that's correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, we're just going to get right inside of our questions and start chatting with you. All right. So yeah. one of the first questions that we have asked every guest that come on, you know, the show is what was the work that you were doing or engaged in when you realized that you've been ready to lead? How old were you? What stage of life were you in? And it really is interesting because folks have answered that question from like, I had never been, I'm still not ready to, I knew when yeah. I came to the world. What's your story? So for me, I, I fell into it. Um, you know, I was working in marketing, um, for years since I was okay. in my late teens, to be honest. Um, when I went to my second high school, uh, that mm -hmm. school was focused on doing internships for credits, okay. um, because it was, it was what, like your parents are called like a 600 school or, you know, like it was an alternative school. So, okay. um, when you got, um, kicked out of one of the main like public schools okay these were alternatives um to getting your mm -hmm. high school diploma mm -hmm. and so I went to the school called City After School um most stuff went there Whoopi Goldberg went there Bossy went school. there yeah yeah, yeah. I'm so an I educator and I was I, I have now many more questions that I did not pre-write for you <laughs> <laughs> okay let's get it I I love to explain that journey just uh -huh. because you know, I think when people look at the kids that go to that school, mm -hmm. um, they, they, you know, they don't really see them as, I guess, um, solid, like, contributors to society. They've already mm -hmm. written them off, That's right? right? And That's so right. I like to really explain it from that sense, like, mm -hmm. starting from there, because it mm -hmm. really, that was the biggest thing to put me on this path that I'm on now, going to that school. Okay. And I credit them um, to this day. I have friends who were I went to my original high school with that are educators there right mm -hmm. and so I actually still work with that that school um now um today because I just feel like I owe that school if you so our circles are actually probably overlapping even more because I've done yeah. I know the people who run that school and I know folks who teach in that school yes wow well, yeah yeah yes. so let's can we uh bring Usually yeah. I don't go off-road as soon. We've already ventured <laughs> off. <Question> one. <laughs> Tell, you know, what is it about being a young person who is told that you have done or are some way or have done something in this school environment and need to go to this other school um, mm -hmm. that actually can be the start of identifying your voice and your leadership? It set me on this path of independence. Yeah. At the same time that I switched schools, because I went, I went to Brooklyn Tech, since you know the schools here. I went to Brooklyn mm -hmm. Tech, which is the specialized school here. Mm -hmm. Um, very stern, mm -hmm. very you know focused mm -hmm. engineering. Right. It used yes. to be an all boys school that put people on a track for pretty much STEM. Yeah. Um, learning, um, and I just didn't learn that like rote learning and kind of sitting and mm -hmm. you know just being told things for eight, nine hours in a day, mm -hmm. I just, I, it just wasn't interesting me, it, mm -hmm. it, interesting to me, like nothing mm -hmm. really kind of pulled me in. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just didn't go, you know, I'm like, why? <laughs> my friends are hanging out. I don't care, you know, yeah. Yeah. but you know, so my dad being Nigerian, Nigerians uh -huh. know there's mm. no fooling around with education, right? right? You do not mess with your education. That is and great. they will disown. If you are on the path to become a doctor, a lawyer, or like an accountant, they will just, that's it. You're right. out of the family, you know, especially, mm -hmm. you know, my dad's very old school, right? Yes, yes. And so I was the third of the youngest of three. 
Um, and mm-hmm. I just, you know, just saw the world differently. You know, I just wanted mm-hmm. to kind of live my life and figure things out. Um, and, but me getting kicked out of this prestigious specialized school mm-hmm. was kind of the final straw for okay. my parents. Okay. And so they were like, okay, you're not going to be going to school, then you're not going to be living in this house. Right. Oh. And so I actually started to live on my own at that. At How 17. old were you? 17. Okay. 17. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so, um, and can I ask I, you, and, I'm yes. sorry, just one other, when no, was this? Oh, this was, I'm, I'm almost 40 now. So this was, ah, this was many, many moons ago. <laughs> well, I'm a little over 40. So I'm like, oh, that wasn't so far ago. <laughs> no, oh, but I'm, like, I'm like, it was forever. Oh, it was yesterday, it was yesterday. <laughs> So, you, you know, that ago. was, but I just, you know, I, so my brain is like, you know, what's the cost of living in New York? Like, how does this young person live on her own? Like, she has some gusto. She has yeah, some stuff so in her that's just, hmm. It, it was, you know, you know, I think I had the mentality of, I started working when I was 14, okay. right? Got my working papers and I just wanted to make money to be able to have a bit more of that independence, right? Mm-hmm. So I was already making a good amount of money, you know, working in fast food first. Uh-huh. And then come 16, I was working at retail. Okay. Um, and I was working at um, Century 21, the one that was at the World Trade Center. So I, I was remember. there. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. And I, I've stayed there. I stayed there for a bit. And there they were just like, you want to work as many hours as you want? Go ahead. So I was just like, yeah, I was working basically overtime. But, you know, back then things were a little bit funny, you know, with that. Yeah. They're like, yeah, you, you're not necessarily. And it's New York. Pay, but you can collect. Exactly. New York know? operates so, very <laughs> different. I mean, it's a city of immigrants. So it's just like, if you want to yes. work hard, we will work you hard. Like if we go will, do it. We will a, take yeah. it. Exactly. There's a free willing exactly. around that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I was making a good amount of money. And I see, so, I see. Um, yeah. So when I got kicked out of my house, um, I found, but you know, I didn't rent an apartment. I found a room I in someone else's apartment that okay. I rented. And it was pretty cheap. That was actually my first, I lived in Bedstuy, but on, um, so right now we are on kind of the true, we're in Stuyvesant Heights, right? Mm-hmm, side mm-hmm, of Bedstuy, mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. I was, was literally across Atlantic avenue I know where that on, was. Mm-hmm. right right there yes, right yeah 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 and at that time it wasn't as sharply gentrified so there's this way in which you at can all. sort of be by yeah. the liwr get on both trains exactly. on either side or two three four uh-huh i yeah i wanted to stay along the a like that was i was from ACR, the a. Euclid, uh-huh. euclid avenue mm-hmm. and i'm like that's my comfort zone that mm-hmm. train gets you to everywhere you need to go or it will connect you you know to some place i'm like this is going to be the easiest thing for me i still have that mentality i'm like and you're still not line. far from home so even though nope. you're this young woman who launched herself if your people if needed I to get to you to. they would and right they could exactly. get to you and you, and you they knew exactly too. where i was of course exactly. they did because exactly. it's not that stern thing but you're still theirs I'm st- exactly. Yeah, so I, I remember, mm-hmm. so, so I left Century 21 to start mm-hmm. working at this place, Paragon Forks, which is still there. Uh-huh, um, uh-huh. And my mom, I remember my mom coming to come. My mother's American. She's from the South. Okay. But my dad, very old school values, mm-hmm. right? She is the keeper of the family, the yeah. nurturer. And she's so like, you're going to be on that her. A-line, Iffy. Listen, <laughs> you ain't, I mean, I know I heard what he said. And right. get on that A-line. Yeah, she, you, yeah, you, you know, yeah, yeah, like, exactly. That. So mm-hmm. she's like, I'm going to come and check in on you. And so mm-hmm. she'd come to my job and like, you know, just come and, and talk to me and stuff. So, you know, she kept a little, you know, a little, she kept you. little leash. Yeah, yeah, not, yeah. Not, not too long of a leash. She's like, I'm going to see you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just make sure that you're okay. Yeah. Um, But it's, you got it. You have to figure this out, you know? Okay. And so that's essentially how I was able to really like survive at that time. But then at the same time, I also mm-hmm. realized that not going to school is not an option because that wasn't necessarily what I wanted the outcome to be. Like I still wanted to get my diploma, but I didn't want to just do it at this school, but I didn't really understand what I wanted. Like I knew I wanted a diploma, mm-hmm. but I didn't like the way I was being educated and I didn't understand how to bridge that. Right. Like I knew I needed a diploma and I needed to get to college in order to Mm -hmm. advance myself. But I just couldn't figure out a path that would just keep me interested and engaged. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so um, I honestly forget how I was presented to the other school. I think I just did my research um, on like school options Mm -hmm. Um, because my option when I got kicked out of Brooklyn Tech, they said, you got to go to your 
zone school. Home school. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And my home school, I had two. One was uh, oh, Jefferson goodness. High School. Mm-hmm. No, so I was in East New York at the time. Oh, okay, okay, so, okay. So okay. one was Jefferson High School and the other mm-hmm. one was Franklin K. Lang, right? Okay. And mm-hmm. both of them had like some of the worst records. Mm-hmm. Um, a huge amount of crime. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, like, and I'm like, well, I don't want to do that. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm not a bad kid in that way. Like, I'm mm-hmm. not, you know, active in like fighting and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I'll be terrorized in that in those schools. This is not. So those I don't are want not to my go people. There. That is not my those place. Those are not. Yeah. No, that's no. not my place. So I can't. Those can't be. I, I, like those can't be options for me. So I need mm-hmm. to find an alternative. And I think that's what led me down the the path of of searching. Mm-hmm. Um, and city as a school came up. I remember, you know, you know, just walking in and kind of like asking questions. Mm-hmm. Um, they told me what they needed, you know, they needed to get my transcript and all of that stuff. So I worked with Brooklyn Tech to pass over mm-hmm. my transcript. Um, my father hated that I was going there. He mm-hmm. told my sister, like I was going to school for dummies. Oh. Um, like, yeah, it was, it's a Nigerian, there a lot, I, um, <laughs> very intense. <laughs> and um and so I navigated that all on my own right yeah, yeah and so my my first internship with them um or one of my first it might not have been my my very first semester but okay. definitely the first or second mm-hmm. was with this company called um the Fader Magazine slash Cornerstone Promotions okay so they're Cornerstone Promotions a marketing company that worked in music and they helped with marketing talent for the record labels. Mm -hmm. Back when MTV TRL was a big thing, Mm -hmm. they had this team that they called the farm team that will go out um, and hand out flyers and kind of guerrilla marketing style things um, Mm. um, during kind of the, when people were standing, because remember with TRL, people would stand outside and kind of like wave Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Uh, So so you'd be out there with the crowd giving them stuff. Yeah, well, that's what what they ran and that's what they they did, right? But they also started to launch their magazine called The Fader, right? Okay. Which now I think people in music, they know The Fader. Like The Fader is, is a huge brand okay. in music um, now. Um, but back then that was issue number, they had just launched issue number one and they were getting ready for issue number two. Okay. Now I think they're in issue number 100 and something. Because remember yeah. this is, you know, over Years two ago. decades ago at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Um, but inside I saw all these people that looked like me. Mm. right in offices and mm. doing something that they loved working in music mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. but they're not singers they're not rappers they're not mm-hmm. it's exposed me to this whole different world mm-hmm. and that they are the machine they're the engine behind mm-hmm. how these artists actually become popular okay. and so I got to learn that and speaking mm-hmm. to them they're like well I went to I went to school like I went to college mm-hmm. I you know did all of that and so at the same time, I'm learning from them and I'm taking in all of this information. Uh-huh. I'm able to get these school credits because I'm working with them. So the way City has worked, you know, let's say you need a math credit based off of your transcript. Mm-hmm. Then you might work at an accounting firm, mm-hmm. right? And kind mm-hmm. of like learn their world or, you know, even like a marketing firm or art, right? So mm-hmm. like that was one thing I needed. So it's like, okay, you're going to go and work in this music company, you know? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so that exposure mm-hmm. just ex- exposed me to a whole other world. Yes. I'm like, whoa, because I'm not a singer. I love music, yeah. but what are the opportunities in music? We don't, when we're, you know, young, we don't get exposed, especially in our neighborhood. We don't get exposed to any of that stuff, mm. right? Mm-hmm. What we, it's very limited. We don't see the behind the scenes. We don't see all the different roles that mm. are possible for us. Mm-hmm. We just think athlete, <laughs> you know, singer, you know, like we don't understand that there's all these different areas mm-hmm, that we can mm-hmm. actually dive into and mm-hmm. be successful mm-hmm. at it. So I'm seeing these people being successful and they looked more like me, you yeah. know? Yeah. And so, so I got to just learn so much about it. And so I stuck with them for a couple of internships. I only did about a year. I only needed about a year in mm-hmm. that school. Cause you were um, 17. You're I was, almost done. Yeah, yeah. I was already, yeah, I was supposed to be a junior, right. Uh-huh, at that uh-huh. time. Um, so I was already almost done. Mm-hmm. So when I, so what was great about that is that I learned immediately what I wanted to do. I'm like, this, this is it. This is what mm-hmm. I want to do. Of course, there's nuances in marketing, right? To understand mm-hmm. where I was. So I thought I wanted to do the art and the design. So I went uh-huh. to uh-huh. City Tech, one of the CUNY schools, okay. Okay. went to City Tech to do ad design. So I learned Photoshop, Illustrator, and all those things. 
So I did that, um, got my two year degree in that, in, in honor, with honors. But I realized that that wasn't, I wasn't as good as some of the other people that were going through the program. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, but what I couldn't execute my vision Mm. as much as I I wanted to. Mm -hmm. And so at the same time, I started interning at um, this old school streetwear brand called Triple Five Soul because I love them. I just cold reached out to them, emailed them saying, hey, I'm just starting college and I want to just keep interning places. And, you know, I want to intern with like, you know, design, because I was doing design, I want to intern with your graphic design Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. team and in your marketing uh, group. And Mm -hmm. they're like, well, we don't have, we don't Enterprise. do design in house. Yeah, yeah. We have well, no, well, we don't do design in house. Or oh, okay, we have okay. to hire an agency, but oh. you can see how we work with them in okay. order for them to kind of execute what we need. And you can also work with our PR person, right? Okay. And so that exposed me to this second, this other world within that of just like, mm. oh, I can just tell people what I what I need, and then <laughs> they go and design it, right? Uh-huh. It doesn't need to be me coming up with the concept and executing it, right? Mm. And so that's where I realized I'm better at the vision. I'm mm-hmm. better at the strategy, right? And then so from there, I graduated, I went to FIT um, to to do um, advertising and marketing communications Mm -hmm. um, and finished my degree. So I got my bachelor's from from there, um, um, cum laude. So I was still... It's like I mean, I it's went, so interesting that you keep dropping these. I was smart in that space <laughs> situation. I, I succeeded. In yes, that. you I, did. I succeeded yes. in those environments, right? That's right. I That's right. These are, two tech, these are two technical schools. Even though Brooklyn yeah. Tech is a technical it. school, but it, it focuses on step, right? Yeah, yeah. Whereas that's not where I want that's not where I wanted to be right yeah once I went to these schools and I got to focus on design and I got to focus on a bit more creative it's like oh that's where I thought Mm. going back taking a pause there in Brooklyn Tech the one uh class I was successful in was technical drawing (laughs) (laughs) you're like I'm an artist everybody (laughs) please see that I am an artist that you were just (laughs) Yes, that's the only class I would go to for two reasons. Um, mm. I didn't, I didn't, and I did enjoy it once I was there um, okay. because it was a bit of remember it's technical drawing, it's not super creative, yeah, but yeah. it's like solving a problem, right? Um, yeah. With with your art, but also that that teacher mm. would find me in the hallway and just drag me in the class. Ah. Like he took an interest Ew. in me succeeding right Mm -hmm. and that goes to you know because that will then you know to come back in my in my future story but it it goes to show you when you genuinely pull people in and Mm -hmm. show them that you care Mm -hmm. about their success they will they they sometimes they need that right in order for them to thrive they need to know that somebody is somebody Mm -hmm. cares you know, my parents didn't care. Well, my mom tried to, you know, she tried right. to care, but my dad will only let her care so much. Right. Mm-hmm. But having that person mm-hmm. that was just like, I actually see potential you. in you. I That's see right. what you can do. Mm-hmm. You know, it goes to show it, 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 it means a lot. You it know, does. it, it, it helps motivate people to see that in themselves. Yeah. So, you know, like, and that was just a little break also right, from right. like c- kind of going into, to my, my college time. And so, you know, I was able to graduate from mm-hmm. FIT and then, mm-hmm. you know, just launch immediately into music marketing. Okay. Like I, I kind of like knew, okay, this is going to be the strategy. I'm going to reach out to places that I, I love, like, you know, industries that I love companies that I love Mm -hmm, and see if mm -hmm. they just have any types of openings that I might be able to get into you know Mm -hmm. and so that opened the door I I met with um uh I started working for this rapper called Talib Kweli um and stop (laughs) (laughs) no just just no we're not going to be doing that today let me just say this (laughs) You work with Tilly Quinn. Not everybody knows. Well, I do. So you do. (laughs) No. Okay. So we're not going to just let you do that. (laughs) So I worked with me. It was him, but it was so it's a record label created by him and his manager, Corey Smith. And I do have to credit Corey Smith was the brains, like 
Tyler mm-hmm. was the creative, he was the artist, mm-hmm. but Corey Smith was the brains behind the label, right? Okay. And so okay. I mainly work with Corey, um, who I still am connected with to this day. I do credit him for giving me my first job out of college, oh, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And then even at the same time, slightly before that, sorry, backtracking, I kind of bounced around a little bit. When I was finishing at FIT, I went back to intern at Cornerstone Promotion Mm -hmm. and then work with their farm team. So I kind of went like after high school, circled back back, um, to them when they had grown bigger. I had those relationships. So I I grew, they grew bigger. um, Mm -hmm. And so I was able to see them and their growth and their expansion. And them with you. But then, yeah, and then with me, them with me, exactly. So, and so, uh-huh. Well, I just, you know, you're sharing with me like this trajectory and like, yeah. I know that I got like, and Whoa. I promise I will get to the, oh to no, the no, moment. we're fine. <laughs> you don't have to, you don't have to. Um, yeah. this is a black woman's podcast is what I often tell black women who are professional and who are used to being told to stay in line. And I, we are circular speakers and we just, we'll do what we want to yeah. do here. So that's not what I'm saying, <laughs> but I, I am that. really curious about and, and perhaps you're on your way there because I'm hearing your business model and, I, and I'm kind of skipping ahead and around too. In mm-hmm. your experience, it's almost as if you started form that you formulated your business around what you needed as a young person, thinking about mm-hmm. what people need when they're engaging in this fitness journey. Does that? Yep. Okay. That's one, that's 100%. That's, okay. It. That's 100%. Okay. It. Um, understanding what it takes, not even just in fitness, in anything, like understanding mm-hmm. what it takes to to make us feel comfortable and make us engage, mm-hmm. right? And wellness just happens to be a thing that I felt that, that like an industry in general where that mm-hmm. wasn't happening, like health yes. and wellness in general, where yes. that just ge- wasn't happening for us. Mm-hmm. And I needed to hop in and take all these things that I learned on my own personal journey mm-hmm. and apply it into the health and wellness space, right? Into something that I love, right? Yeah. Like yeah. like going back to finding that thing that I love and how can I kind of like just grow and really thrive mm-hmm. in this and help other people, you know, mm-hmm. thrive. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, so after working for, for Corey and, and Kwa, um, I live about a year. This rapper named Philip <laughs> Kwale. <laughs> I just can't, <laughs> you know, you may or may not know him <laughs> because, you know, cause he was still considered like indie backpacker. And, you know, I, I know, feel like but now, now today I know him. Drama. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I feel like now he has, he's surrounded by drama, oh, okay. Um, okay. but, but then it was, it was just it was such different. a great, mm-hmm. it was different. It was such yeah. a great time. Um, also they had the backing of Warner brothers. Right. Mm-hmm. So it was like, you know, proper, proper kind of label. Actually, we were small. It was only five of us, you know, working on this. Um, mm-hmm. and I started as an intern, but then it happened to be that they let go of the, um, this is an interesting story. They let go of the receptionist okay. um, cause she just wasn't receptionist. Doing, she was a receptionist slash, slash Corey's assistant. And she just wasn't fulfilling the needs the role, yeah. and so yeah the role and so they got rid of her and said you can do it I'm like why don't mm-hmm. you hop into that role so that's why that was my very first official job mm-hmm. um but then um I sucked at it too but I had <laughs> other qualities that were- <laughs> I'm gonna be bad at things I don't like right I don't I don't I don't know how to manage grown people's schedules you know like I'm just like what so what I would do it's like you're horrible at this he, I'd send him his schedule in the daytime and that was it. I would have never talked about the schedule again. So he, he's like, I missed my meeting. I'm like, well, I sent you your schedule this morning. Yeah. And he's like, oh my okay. God. <laughs> this is, but yeah. <laughs> what I was good at, which is what he allowed me to do yeah. was I wanted to practice my like pitch. You know, I learned all this like press uh-huh. release stuff and pitching and all this stuff in college. So I said, let me practice that. So, you know, I reach out to like a kid robot and I'd say like, hey, you know, we have this artist you know, this is a quality, this is all his background, you know, you do toys, like they tend to do collaborations. I was like, we'd mm-hmm. love to set up a meeting and they mm-hmm. reach back out like, hey, let's like set something up. So that's mm-hmm. the stuff that he loved. He mm-hmm. loved the way that I did outreach. He loved the way that I wrote press releases for mm-hmm. all the releases that we were doing because they never had that before. Yeah. Um, so he did like that. Yeah, vibe. he was like, maybe I can keep track of myself and we can get this skill set that we didn't realize we needed in the oh, office yeah. so by he having brought back, 
he, yes, exactly. He, he, he had advanced his old assistant um, to doing other things. Mm-hmm. So he just had her come back and do that. And do the schedule, and yeah. You do the schedule, just to add the schedule to her list of things. And I was focused on um, kind of the bit of artist management, but also like helping him yeah. do this outreach. and Which brand. generates also, the business. Exactly. Yeah, you know? which is much more valuable. Yes. Yeah. And so yeah. ultimately there were things I really, he was, he was also a little plug. We did the, um, now you're warning me about just a little plug. Me. <laughs> this was just, this was just before I came on. So I only okay. got to have fun with the, um, once we started working on the soundtrack of it, but mm-hmm. he, Corey did the music for the Chappelle show. He was the music supervisor. So he brought on all the artists. That's why Quan, most stuff, and like all those, the roots and uh, uh, like that's why he, those he were, that, that was his relationship. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And so um, Corey has this whole Rolodex of mm-hmm. people that he knows. And mm-hmm. I said, you know what we can do with this Rolodex that we have? Let's like make this massive, like just build con- these connections. So I can make these connections and you have this Rolodex. Let's make it so that we're, we're linking these artists with these with these companies we're mm-hmm. linking these artists with pepsi we're linking them with and we are the connectors yes. and this is where we're going to take the business this is how mm-hmm. we're going to grow that vision and you know and he mm-hmm. got excited about it we started talking to all different types of people just trying to get it going but then talks about it slow down mm-hmm. and for me being so young I'm ready to go I was like 22 mm-hmm. 23 at the time mm-hmm. I'm right now like what's the next thing let's like keep advancing like this mm-hmm. artist management we were still very indie I'm like this yeah. isn't really like growing and growing any going mm-hmm. anywhere um and so I think just Corey and I were on different timelines mm-hmm. right and mm-hmm. so um because he's there now with his artists now they're doing a lot of great stuff yeah um but I think just at the time I was a little bit too I was mm-hmm. in, too into the future I was thinking too mm-hmm. far ahead you're an Afro And so I said, listen, <laughs> listen, when I see it, when I see really? it, I'm, I, I feel like I, I have a, I have a knack for seeing mm-hmm. where things are going, seeing where the trend is going. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it just takes time for people to kind of get there, Catch up you with know, you. even when it comes to this business, even when it comes to this, we were the first in Bedside to do this, you know, I we're know. the first in a, in, in a lot of black communities. Like you can't go to Inglewood, you can't go to, you know, uh, well, you can go to Detroit because I know the girl who's open in Detroit, but you can't, a lot of different areas where there's our communities and see us, right? See see us doing wellness mm. in, in our communities, you know? Like mm-hmm. people keep asking me because they're moving to other places. They're like, I'm moving here. Like, is there mm-hmm. like a fit in there? It's okay. Like, no, Let's talk about fit in because it. right now I have other questions, but I feel like we yes. need to introduce the audience to Yes. Where this vision Who took I am. you. So yeah. you're iffy. You created yes. the fit in. And on Google, yes. mm-hmm. Google tells me that it is a black woman owned boutique fitness brand with three studios mm-hmm. in the heart of Brooklyn, offering Pilates, reformer, reformer, bar, mm-hmm. strength classes, and more. So mm-hmm. why the name? Why the fit in? Why is it called that? So I wanted a place where everybody felt like they fit in. Um, right. And so yeah. that's, 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 that's the name, honestly, you know, because we, there's so many times we go to places where we just feel like the odd person out or we're treated that way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so this is a place, this is a community, right. Mm-hmm. Where, mm-hmm. cause the fitted is not just a location, right. It's mm-hmm. a community. So yeah. wherever we go, it's the fit in. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I want them to feel when they come into this community, like it's that they really fit hard. right in. That's right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Well, it's interesting what you're saying about people that you know, clients, I'm assuming, but other folks are maybe connecting with you who are saying, mm-hmm. I live in Inglewood. I live in this, you know, this community, this community sounds like predominantly yeah. black and yes. that they don't see themselves. They don't see black people engaging in fitness spaces. Mm-hmm. You know, when that does come, it's not them. So there's yeah. almost like this gentrifier, you know, wellness is seen as a gentrifier, right? Because I yeah. know like I lived in bed I also live in Oakland, California now. Mm-hmm. And we know that a community is gentrifying and it feels quite violent when it happens, when we mm-hmm. see uh, folks jogging and walking their dogs. Yep. And so that, that is also like wellness as gentrifier, right? Yeah. But you putting the fit in and your spaces are beautiful. Be- you. They really are like, they make you feel. They, they just feel very seamless and calm and serene and clean that those are things that calm me down. It's like, there's no, yeah. I love this, but exactly. 
for folks to walk by and see that incredibly beautiful space. And there is not a white woman, very thin stretching in there um, yeah. as the owner. That's a different yeah. feeling that, it so is. that fit in piece, that's a, a an initial marker of that mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. up top, yep. right up top. Yep. It's, I mean, it's, it's, I remember seeing um, when we first started, Mm-hmm. Um, we first and we had our social media going. Uh-huh. Um, we posted a video of just people working out. Um, you could I was videoing even though I was instructing, so you couldn't see me. You just saw a class, and it was it was it was like a mixed class. But at the time, we were very much you know um, very much more predominantly black most classes, okay. right? Okay. Um, and and so, was that on purpose that people not see you, or is that just a function of how you all were recording at the time? Just just how we all were recording okay, at the okay, time. Okay. Um, just because the spaces are small and it's just like, okay, I want to capture the class and mm-hmm. I'm busy teaching. So they're only going to see, you know, who's in front of me uh-huh, as opposed uh-huh. to who's behind the camera, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. And so we posted a, a video of that and someone commented, I think they were tagging a friend that lived in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Um, they might not have lived in the neighborhood. And they said, oh, you know, so-and-so, it looks like the white folks have made it to your neighborhood. Ooh, so see how strong that is? Okay. Yep. okay. But then a few moments later, that was deleted, right? The comment was not by me, but it seemed like by the person who posted it. I'm not sure. Mm. Um, but I think it's because maybe the person knew who we were, which is like, actually, that's a black folks. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it, it takes when people see wellness, they automatically think Mm -hmm. there's a white person behind Mm -hmm. it, right? Mm -hmm. Especially in our neighborhood, because at the time we had a couple of black yoga studios. I see one actually. Mm -hmm. Um, And yoga, I think was the only one that I remember. I heard of that one. I never attended it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It used to be right across the street um, from us. And then um, she opened another location on No Stream, but during COVID, they had to close the one across the street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, And then there was another place called Namaste, which is white owned. Um, that people mm-hmm. loved, right? And that was on not too far from from where we were. Um, and then, other than that, there was you know mm-hmm. big box gyms like Planet Fitness and mm-hmm. and and those guys on Fulton. Mm-hmm. And so there wasn't anything, you know, focusing on strength building or anything mm-hmm. like that. Focusing mm-hmm. on Pilates, these are modalities that I knew and I learned. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you know, we opened it up in the neighborhood just to provide access right? Mm-hmm, for us, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And it was important for them to be able to see me, right? Mm-hmm, as mm-hmm. the person who brought this to them, mm-hmm. because I'm from the neighborhood, mm-hmm. right? And so I know I had lived it in it before I even opened the fit. I had already lived in that particular neighborhood where I live now mm-hmm. for about 10 years, I see. nine, 10 years, right? I so I knew the neighborhood already. Um, so then to be able to bring this business right mm-hmm. that helped people in the neighborhood get well mm-hmm. um and even from our marketing because now I have all this marketing knowledge you know at the time I was 10 12 years into 10 or 12 years into um mm. into a, a video game marketing because after okay. I left music you went I went to off games. to video games okay. yeah um just to work on bigger budgets but it gave me an in-depth knowledge on on how to create ads and things like that mm-hmm. um so mm-hmm. the ads we we ran focus on the on the neighborhood it was a mm-hmm. picture of me in Utica Avenue tree I said if if I wanted to go to a business right mm-hmm. that's in the neighborhood what would I want to see that would draw me in okay and you know Brooklyn we have a pride but definitely bed folks oh, we have girl. this pride about it yes. right about yes. our neighborhood yes so I still have it and I moved listen <laughs> <laughs> I know I was born in Southern California and people will be like, where are you from? I was like, I'm from, I'm from, you know, California. I said, but I'm, I'm a New Yorker. Right. And they're like, but you live in, I was like, I know I, but I told you who I was. I told you what it is. I'm from Brooklyn. (laughs) (laughs) You like, you can, anywhere you go, it's like, where are you from? Brooklyn. Like Mm -hmm. we just have this energy and this, this like steak attitude about us when you ask us where we're from, but we're going to own it. There's a pride that we just have, right? Right. And so I said, with this ad, what is this ad going to be? And I said, it's, it's not even, it's not going to be anything about weights or anything or, mm-hmm. you know, losing weight or anything like that. It's going to be me with my gym bag mm. in Utica Avenue train station. So uh-huh. you can clearly see this Utica Avenue mm-hmm. and that's it with my big hair 
and talking about, you know, making sure that you are healthy enough to be able to chase after your toddlers and, you know, carry groceries and things That's like right. that. That's so right. that was the ad because I wanted nothing to do with body or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, Strength. That ad just took off. Yeah. It just took off. And people were coming in in droves after yeah, seeing that yeah. ad. And you saw people like, that's my train station. That's what yes, I saw the ad. Yes. I mean, you know? when you said Utica Ave, I'm literally looking at that black square with the white writing in that particular yes. subway station font, yes. the yellow pillar. I'm like, I know exactly what you're saying. Like, you I know, know exactly it. Like, what that's, you're saying. Yeah, you know it. Yeah. Like, man, what, it's like, I could be selling cardboard and people be like, I'm gonna show up because they're my neighborhood and they're representing. That's you know? really true. Like, That's really yeah. true. And those roots like, run gonna deep. Support. That's right. You're gonna That's support, right. right? Absolutely. And so that, that ad for us kind of really, really took off and, and mm. brought people in and it gave them something different because mm-hmm. I felt like people, I always trace this back. And this is again, going back to my history of mm-hmm. how, how, what are my feelings, right? How do I feel in certain spaces? How do I feel about certain things? And if I feel this way, I can't be the only one, That's right? Real. That's so real. let's see how this is. So for me, <laughs> yoga was not something I was able to really have ever been really been able to really deeply connect with or attach okay. to. Okay. Um, and that's just me personally. Mm-hmm. And so I said, my modalities that I want to focus on here are going to be strength modalities, but also we have a number of yoga studios. So if people are already doing yoga, they, let the, they yeah. can they have a place that they can mm-hmm. go already right and plus the place is right across the street from us so I'm like I don't want to be in competition either because I want to make sure business and business we're working together right? Right. right I'm not trying to pull people from from her right mm. and so I said we're never going to have I committed to never having yoga at the studio we have it now because both those businesses I talked about closed so now there's no yoga options in the area yeah. so we have it now but to start, I said, we're going to focus on just strictly strength-based modalities. Um, and so we brought strength training and we brought Pilates mat okay. and keep, I mean, they loved it. They loved it. It was uh, for many, their first introduction to Pilates, mm-hmm. they might've done some form of strength training before with dumbbells and things like that. Mm-hmm. But Pilates is definitely the new addition. Um, and mm-hmm. people started to really embrace it and really, mm-hmm. really understand it. And it wasn't just this white modality because mm-hmm. that's what I think everybody thinks, you know, exactly. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. it still is like, to be honest, mm-hmm. it still is a very white well, modality. It's cost prohibitive. It, it's cost and prohibitive. And where it's located, it has yes, not been exactly. available. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, your, your studios are right mm-hmm. smack dab in the middle of a black neighborhood. So one of the things that I recall in living in bed was the kind of fitness desert you could have in that space, yes. you know? Yep. And so the options for an wellness early morning desert class, in general. wellness, des- that's right. Yeah. And so the options for like an early morning class or those things, they were not there. They are now. And so, you know, we both, mm-hmm. we have now, I know we have mutual, we, we probably have many, yeah, friends many mutual common. friends. <laughs> I know we'll talk more about that later, but you know, I know for my sister friend uh, who I learned about your work with her because how strong she was feeling. Yeah. literally yep. living city life with her son growing up, like it yep. did ha- wreck havoc on her body. Um, yeah. And so she was feeling strong and vibrant in the middle of a time when everybody was feeling really vulnerable during COVID. Yes. And I was COVID. like, I got to meet this iffy woman. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Why do you think that we, that that community, that that neighborhood, you know, mm-hmm. needed not just fitness space, because it is the convenience mm-hmm. space that makes it accessible. You know, I'm certain yeah. that you've found the right price points that folks can yeah. access and all that. Mm-hmm. But you describe the work as a boutique fitness space that's grounded mm-hmm. in the lived experiences of Black women. And I feel like there's something, you know, the Kambahi River, Kambahi River Collective um, mm-hmm. statement speaks about we, when Black women are free, we are all free. And there's something about the way that you've structured this business, which is that if we can cater to the lived experiences of black women through boutique fitness, fitness will be accessible to everybody. 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 Tell us about it. Like, yeah. Yeah. I think a a big part of it too, is that because when white folks walk into any space, they already feel comfortable because they're used to feeling comfortable Mm -hmm. in spaces, right? They're used to being catered to. True. Whereas for us, especially if you have, you know, either coming from immigrant parents or even mm-hmm. many of us have family that comes from the South, right? Mm-hmm. And have lived through 
you know, segregation, Jim Mm -hmm. Crow and things like that. Mm -hmm. So those values can sometimes be passed down of, you know, make sure that you're not causing too much ruckus, you know, make sure that you are keeping yourself small and, you know, don't, don't cause any problems when you walk Mm -hmm. in spaces. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really understanding that and having that direct, uh, relationship experience mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know with that to know like why you know place wellness especially which is so predominantly white we could walk into a space and not you know if we don't know what we're doing we don't want to even start and try because we don't want to be a bother right oh, and even the emails that we get till this day hmm. uh of people who are just like i've never done this before like you know, should, should I, like, where mm-hmm. should I start? What should I do? I just don't mm-hmm. want to cause any, and it's just like, girl, get in here. Like, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know? And the fact that you would say it like that, like, I made this <laughs> yeah. for you. Get up in exactly. here. Exactly. Yes. L- yes. Listen, I said, I was at a panel the other day and I mm-hmm. said, I make, we make an extra effort to make sure, particularly black women, but many underrepresented groups and uh-huh. underserved groups, but particularly black women, feel comfortable in a space and we are unapologetic about it. So if I'm doing extra to make sure mm-hmm. that she feels comfortable moving her body and in the space, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. And you, everybody has to feel comfortable with that, right? Mm-hmm. Like that, cause that's just our business model, right? Because mm-hmm. these are women and groups and people who have not been allowed to be themselves and mm-hmm. not been allowed to explore movement because mm-hmm there's because of fear right yeah, fear yeah. of being casted out fear mm-hmm. of being disruptive fear of you know causing causing a problem right well and, and also don't you think too because in the fitness space it's a public community space but it's mm-hmm. also performative and if you don't feel like you're performing correctly and if you haven't had experience doing that over a period of time then you're less confident and you're less confident and, and you feel like a failure doesn't feel, yeah. and it doesn't feel good with mirrors everywhere exactly. feeling like that mm-hmm. yeah yeah exactly mm-hmm. you you don't feel good about yourself you That's know right. and so it's very important so we created a boutique experience and it's like mo- a lot what of does that mean it that it's really- boutique so, so boutique fitness, it's actually the largest growing segment of the fitness okay. industry, right? Okay. And the reason is, re- the reason why they call it boutique is because usually a boutique fitness experience is small. It's right. Mm-hmm. It's not big box gym. So there's big box gym and then it's like boutique fitness, right? Mm-hmm. You can have a boutique gym. That just means it's a smaller size. Okay. Um, okay. You could, but you can also have um, like boutique fitness classes, right? Mm-hmm. Um, where you, in boutique fitness classes, you do, you focus on a specific modality in that class. And that's kind of what, that's, that's it. Like there's not kind of all of this, like, you know, here's this random gym equipment or whatever. Mm-hmm. So think of Crunch where there's a bunch of gym equipment, yeah, but then yeah. they also have group classes, right? So, so it's so like a, big box cost, uh, what's that? Costco. Costco. Is yeah. like the big gym place big, and yeah. like the fit the in is local, sort of, yeah, this like, yeah, you're right, like your local grocery. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. It's yeah, little, yeah. The boutique. So that's, yeah. and that just allows people to feel, not feel lost. Mm-hmm. Right. In a space, but people also call us like a bit more semi private because we mm-hmm. are even smaller than a lot of boutiques. You know, I've done, I've done a few classes. I told you, cause when I visit yes. our mutual friend, yeah, <laughs> and we're friends. I'm like, she well, we drags gotta, you in. She's we, like, well, she don't she's drag not me, take right? Me off my schedule. Huh? She, <laughs> yeah, we we're, we're friends because that wouldn't even be possible, right? She was like, well, I'll right. be back, or you can come, kind of thing. And yeah. I went because yeah. I was like, you know, it was funny time with her. And yeah, I went to a yoga class this last time mm-hmm. I was visiting in June, and yes, there were just six of us in there, mm-hmm. and it was so much fun and connective. Yep. I felt this depth of community in yes. that space, right? Yeah, and you're able to in that small class size, Mm -hmm. you're able to actually speak to the people that you're moving with, Mm -hmm. right? Like this isn't Mm -hmm. just the transaction. You're not just walking and getting your class and leaving. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, we're gonna have a conversation about your weekend, right? We're gonna have a conversation about what's happening. We're all gonna feel comfortable yelling, you know, like Mm -hmm. your friend. She is, she is vocal, and I'm like, listen. You would never know that about her. That's so funny. I love it. 
I'm going to tease her now. <laughs> but she was just like, yep, I'm a grunt. I'm going to do what I got to yes, do. Yes, yes. And this and is my space. Okay. I don't have to try to hide how I sound yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. This this my, my body sounds like this when we were doing this exertion. Exactly, exactly. And I was vocal, but that. I was saying cuss words because I was like, why? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we encourage it. It's like, if that's how you need to get it out, right? If that's how you need to get through it, go for it, right? Oh my you gosh, know? okay. Yeah, and, and I think that's another reason why we didn't venture into traditional yoga because you went to the beats and yoga class. This is like yes. the movement and strength, Which right? I love the trap music with the movement. I was like, yes. Yes. <laughs> so good. But that's so the good. reason why we went that route with the yoga because it had to align with our Pilates and our strength training in the sense mm -hmm. that we want people to feel like they can interact mm -hmm. with not just the instructor, but with each other. That's and right. Just make that's it, right. That's we don't right. need to take ourselves too seriously, right? The instructors yeah. will make sure you're safe. But listen, this is, this is family. Yeah, this Let's is talk. family. Let's have a conversation. When and that feels very talking, Brooklyn, actually. Oh, yeah. That mm -hmm. feels very Brooklyn. Definitely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So, so that's another thing that really separates us from other yoga studios of the Pilates studio. If you go to another Pilates studio, you, you know that you got to zip it as you move. Yep. Yeah, Everything has yeah. to be like, you know, yeah, yeah. By, by the book, you know, don't, you know, venture, don't, don't try to disrupt, you know, mm. if you even do a little, uh, don't, you, like, ooh, you know, so yeah, unseemly. you can't do any of that. Whereas here, it's just like, show up in your, you know, oversized tea and, you know, whatever was clean that morning, just put mm -hmm. it on, get it in the mm -hmm. studio, let's mm -hmm. have a good time. Or You're you can put on your, your Serena outfit and you're going to be like, girl, that is bad. Or, yes, exactly. <laughs> or show off if you want, you know what yeah, I mean? So, like, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely, like, one of the instructors that's known to put on a fit. Like, I love, yeah. I love a good The fit in, outfit. that's the other. Exactly. The, 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 <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love coming in with a fit because it's fun, right? Yes. Um, but it's never, no one ever feels the need to, you know, dress up. I mean, somebody came in when she does Soul Cycle. Uh -huh. um also and she does our pilates stuff mm -hmm. and she came in and we were talking about outfits she's like yeah this bad outfit when i go to school it's like i'll put on this thing she's like you know i don't do that here just because you know this that's not what this place is about and it's like i like that she has that mentality of just yeah, like yeah, yeah this thing is not about you know the look of it or whatever but I'm still like, but I, I still want to see an outfit. If you got an outfit, let's pull it I out. Mean, I mean, the, the puns are just falling all off over the place. Fitting <laughs> in, the fit in and the fit. Yes. <laughs> you know, I, I wonder about that. When I was in the class that I attended, it was a diverse class in that yes. there were a few, there was a sprinkling of, of some white people in that space. Yes. And, you yes. know, the fit, we've talked about this in roundabout ways, but I want to ask specifically, yes. you know, yes. fitness and, and health, those industries have largely been offered through the experience of whiteness whether it's body types and styles, yeah. ideas of what is healthy, what is not healthy and cultural notions of what it means to be sick or well. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I just wonder if you could talk a little bit about something that you said when we met briefly before, which is, yeah. you know, this is a, a, an institution, this is a, a, a business, a focus on fitness that places Black women at the center and at the front. You've talked yeah. about you know, the business choices and, and decisions you've made about putting Black women, Black bodies, and Black experiences in a historically yet fastly gentrifying community mm -hmm. at the center. At and the center of it. Talk about that. I mean, I feel like, again, mm -hmm. we've gotten around it because that is what really intrigues me about you. Yeah. Um, yes. And also uh -huh. that sort of betting on Black within the context of a business model feels really important mm -hmm. to tease up and out. Yes. And I'll say, just even speaking on that last last point, Okay. And, and then and then going backwards is sure. that's a big thing that frustrates me and that's why I stopped doing things like pitch competitions and things like that because I was tired of hearing that there's no opportunity to scale because we focus on mm. black women and women of color that was that's the consistent thing that I hear when you speak to VCs and and they're just like they they don't see it when mm. we focus on 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 black women and I'm like one that's not what this business is about. Our business is about making sure that black women feel centered and they are able to see themselves as, see themselves in the wellness space, be seen, be heard and be provided for, right? That's always gonna be our mission, our business model and we're not gonna waver from that or we're unapologetic about that. But also 
do you see what happened to the hair care industry? Uh, there's so many industries. Like, <laughs> I just think like, like, we bring, like, we spend billions. We work hard. And we spend billions, Listen, even the brokest of us is just like, I got to get my hair done, girl. I got to get my hair done. And so yeah. that's what we're trying to do for wellness, right? Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. so Michelle Obama said, when we make wellness a priority, mm -hmm. we're better able to show up in all areas of this our is, lives. This is correct. Right? This is correct. And so you see these white women jogging and stuff like that because they are, I'm going to, I'm going to get my wellness in. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do it. They have all these, you go to Soho, you go in their neighborhood, Soho, Chelsea. There is studio literally on top of studio on top of there are buildings with just studios on top of each other, right? There's mm -hmm. so like flat iron in New York is mm -hmm. the fitness center, right? Okay. Because there's okay. so many studios. Uh -huh. Then you head out to our neighborhood. Nah, you think... can't find the Anna one. I mean, maybe in Park like, Slope. Park so Park Slope, but that we ain't. Right. There you gotta go anymore. and they have and there's not a straightaway direct you know direct to even get mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. Williamsburg is a roundabout to even get there it's that's really hard to get, to get there. to mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so like we and then but we have to people are asking us to travel an hour out of our way to be able to get wellness in when these other folks just got to walk downstairs and that is exactly what I was saying before about being able to do a morning workout or an even exactly. evening one you know like I remember and I don't have children or family right mm -hmm. so I would have to go to, in order to get to work. And I started work late, right? So mm. I started work at 10 where most people started like nine, right? Mm -hmm. So I would have to go, I would take an 8.30 class in Flatiron, which means I would have to pack my stuff either the night before and in the morning. So leave by 7.30 and don't let that A train be messed up because which... then I missed that, that $40 class, which is very likely, right? And mm -hmm. then I missed that $40, $40 a class. Mm. Missed that $40 class. And they can't get my money back because I'm five minutes late, right? Mm -hmm, so they're mm -hmm. just like, they're not going to let me in. And I all can't these get my pressures and tensions and the lack of forgiveness. And exactly. plus, I don't think people appreciate what it, what it means to live in New York and have to yeah. be a vagabond with all that stuff on the stuff. I mean, it's a exactly. lot of, and that's part of a what lot. makes our bodies so um, vulnerable to injury when we're not strong because we're carrying we're babies, strollers, it. groceries. Yes our duffel bag to go work out if we can even make that happen. And then that's if we can afford to do it. If we can afford to do that, that's literally what the ad was. Like speaking mm -hmm. about having to carry all of these things around, having to mm -hmm. do all of this stuff in mm -hmm. this very New York City life. Like we mm -hmm. are beating ourselves up and we aren't able to make wellness a priority because no one's given us the opportunity to. Mm -hmm. No one thinks that we're important enough to. Mm -hmm. Because you have all these companies, all these businesses that are, Honestly, they're using our people, right? Mm -hmm. With many of these studios, they're trainers. When, you, when it comes to strength training, when it comes to Pilates and bar, that's- different. No, I know, but when I've had many sister training, friends on that early train too, to get to go teach their class. Yes, exactly. That's right. right? That's right. So they use us at the front. We're never in the executive room, mm -hmm. right? So they use us at the front, right? But they don't want to come to our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. They want don't want to make it more affordable for- for, for, for our folks, right? Yeah. Because, you know, unfortunately, when it comes to lower incomes, they're largely, you know, made of black, brown, immigrant yes, folks, yes, right? Yes. Like they don't want to make any of those accommodations, right? right. They just want to see that money because they're paying these high rents. I get it, right? Yeah, you chose yeah. to be in Chelsea. So you chose to pay $30,000 a month. So you're trying to recover. Like no, I get that, right? To be in Chelsea, but that's true. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, I mean, that's Chelsea. what they do. Yeah, you yeah, chose yeah. Chelsea as your as your as your option, mm -hmm. right? Instead of thinking, what can I do to make sure I'm always a people over profits person in mm -hmm. general, right? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. for me, I said, how can I make sure my folks have the access that they need, right? That's going to mm -hmm. be by being where they are. Mm -hmm. I want this the same thing that got me getting up and going to these spaces that I enjoy. And I, you know, I, I don't go to them anymore per se, but you know, I enjoy it. And I get that I enjoy them for a long period of time, mm -hmm. but what are those things and how can I take that mm -hmm. and bring that to us? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's location, right. Mm -hmm. Making sure that somebody can just walk up the block if they need to, to be able mm -hmm. to get to that class. Mm -hmm. Right. Because mm -hmm. that's what, that's what Becky's able to do. Right. So I want to make sure that we're able to do it too. Right. <laughs> I want to make sure that it's within our budget. Right. Yes, we're yes. balancing a lot. Like yes. they're able to afford a nanny and all that stuff. They got, you know, we might not have, have access that. to all of it. We That's don't right. have that access. Right. So I want to make sure that it's, it's more within their budget, you know, and I want to make sure that when they get there, 
from top to bottom, they see us. Right. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. I was, um, I'm a small business still. So it was me as the executive team, right? Executive team, janitor, everything. That was me. (laughs) (laughs) But, and the instructors, right, looked like them. They came from the community, right? There were all types of shapes and sizes, ages, you know? Mm -hmm. And so they're just like, whoa, like, and then you see people that look like you that are your na- neighbor from up the block. That's right. It's like, oh, I just saw you in, yes. in that It's space actually moving. building more community when you think it's about it. More, the amount of people that did not know each other, but then became mm-hmm. close friends. We have people that became close friends, sharing doctors, fertility things, like go, traveling together mm-hmm. from just meeting. In the wellness-centered space. In yes. this wellness-centered space, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. It, it just created this sense of, and then over COVID, I mean, forget it. The amount of yeah. people that were just like, you saved me mm-hmm. during COVID, mm-hmm. you know, like you helped me with my mental health more than That's physical right. health. That's even, right. Right. Cause you all had like, that outdoor space and I tried that yep. role thing. I was in so much. Yeah. Pain. the battle. <laughs> It was ridiculous. Yeah, you had Denise who does not let up. Denise did not let up. I was, I was like, oh, I feel like I'm the negative Nancy here. And Denise, I hate you and I love you. And I need to do this more. And I feel like it's a one-off. Listen, you know, you said something interesting about being in that pitch space, which we know you have a long history. You've been doing it since yay high of knowing how to put your business in front of people or put a business, yeah. put an interest in front of folks. And that venture capitalist just couldn't see it. And yeah. now your work and you have had some pretty high profile features in Forbes. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I learned uh, as I was doing research, preparing to talk with you about mm-hmm. um, the association between the Fit app and the Fit In. Um, yeah. Oh, the, the Fitbit, Fitbit app, yeah. Fitbit, right? Yeah, uh-huh. And so uh-huh. I just wonder, it's kind of like a how you like me now kind of moment, but what has <laughs> it meant for you to lift the profile of Black women's fitness in the mainstream, in those mainstream spaces? I think, you know, and, and yeah, I mean, and if Kubo D DCs, plays in the background for you, like, that's fine. If that's you... fine. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, how you like me now? Like, yeah. it, it is, <laughs> it is, it is um, more than anything, it's giving light to what's possible, right? right? When that's you right. just really put more of a priority on, on black people and black mm-hmm. women, right? Yeah. Like people are able to see, like, you know, I don't, I don't feel, I don't, I shouldn't have a monopoly, monopoly on opening black wellness spaces in black neighborhoods, right? Neither like, should Rihanna want, on lingerie and makeup. But if you exactly. neglect the whole market, then you're going to leave all types of money on the table. All types of money on the table from a VC <laughs> perspective. But That's you're right. also leaving so many people, uh-huh. you know behind mm-hmm. when it comes to something that is so important you know like different yeah. as much as I love Riri and I love me some savage frenzy honey I mean I'm wearing but as, <laughs> listen like <laughs> I'm like Rihanna call on me I'm like, to do light me up but as much but as, as you much love it though us, mm-hmm. I love her though you know it's like we're talking about health and wellness like That's we're talking right. about keeping people alive alive mm-hmm. right like, mm-hmm. why should this be a, seen as a luxury? Well, it's interesting right? because when you talk about folks, so we all know, well, people who are listening, if you have not lived in Brooklyn and in New York, then you need to know that people could live five minutes from each other and go to the same fitness studio, but live on different blocks and therefore be in different countries. So that's, that's a very exactly. real, that's a very real yes. thing. <laughs> but that, that, that idea too of that space being the gathering space, and I would say sort of like a Harriet Tubman. 